<laughs> Hi, everybody. All right. This is so amazing. All right. Because I am so excited about our guest today. She's just a uh, fashion industry veteran and an expert. Robin Fisher, she's one of those amazing people. She's from the Washington, D.C. area. But in 2018, no, I'm sorry, 2008, she left the corporate fashion world and, and she went into her passion to really help people to create a look and feel for who they are. And her experience in the fashion industry has really changed the face of everything. She's just worked with executive placement, store buyers, and magazine creative directors. And she's been doing all of these fantastic things in the international space. And so I am super excited to have you here, Robin. You got to tell us about you and how you got started. I'm not sure I gave you all the right accreditation. Should we start that again? <laughs> do, no, do I need to start? That's okay, that's good. That's Wait. Yeah. I'm sure we'll get into it. So that's, <laughs> that's good. So tell me, all right. So you're helping people to get their look and feel together, right? Yes, so yeah. who, tell me, how did you get started doing this? Cause you came from the fashion industry. So where did you work and what did you do in the past? And how did you even get into that? Where were you born? And tell, tell us a little bit about you and your past. I'd love to hear it. Sure. Um, so I was born and raised in Oakland, California. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and um, my grandmother actually owned a business in San Francisco and she dealt with antiques and vintage. And so literally people would come to her as a, when I was a little girl um, for costuming. So it would be jazz singers, um, theater, um, you know, costume designers and, you know, collectors and all those kind of things. But where we would go to get the merchandise was where I really kind of fell in love with um, the whole process of fashion and manufacturing and all that kind of stuff, because we would take um, trips into Denver to the cotton mills. Oh, and so wow. as a little girl, I would climb, you know, like a story high of nothing but cotton garments. And basically they were there um, to get bleached back white, soaked, and then the yarns come apart and then re-spun into thread. And so my wow. grandmother was there to pull out the antiques and the vintage finds um, before they went through that process. So oh, that was something wow. that I actually just was always enamored with. <laughs> um, and then Oakland is in San Francisco definitely is an industrial kind of town. Um, and so as I got older, I, you know, my mother is a master tailor. Um, she used to sew people wow. wedding gowns and um, prom dresses in our living room. And so I just had always been around the industry. Um, wow. And so, you know, but I was a troubled teen, <laughs> you know, I will not lie. I did not <laughs> well, have Oakland, I, I lived in Oakland, so I know. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. You can get into a lot of trouble in yes, Oakland. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, but I just always wanted more for myself. But the biggest yeah. thing that I watched my family work together as a family. And if our businesses made money, that meant we ate well that week. If our business yeah didn't make money, it meant it was a little bit of a struggle. And so I always wow. had a personal goal of mine um, was for me to go into the fashion industry at a corporate level. However, you didn't see a lot of people back in those days that looked like me. No, um, for sure. So people definitely never really took me seriously, um, but it was just something that was a burning desire because I just loved the legacy of my family. So it wasn't until I um, went to college, got my act together at 19, 20 years old and finally enrolled in San Francisco State um, that I started, um, you know, I'd always worked retail jobs, you know, even my first job outside of my grandmother and family's businesses um, was at the Ross Dress for Less, you know. Oh, yeah, but, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I've worked, you know, high-end retail, you know, Ferragamo and Nordstrom's and, you know, all that kind of stuff. My, and I just loved, you know, just the whole sales process, helping yes. people. And I did that all through college. But once I was coming out, um, I took a non-paid internship at a fashion company in San Francisco um, that hired me probably about six or eight months before I actually graduated. Um, and then I was put on full-time once I graduated. Wow, that's fantastic. Well, you know, that's where I came from that. That's what I did when okay. I was in college. I did all that retail, you know, Nordstrom's, yeah. Frederick and Nelson when they existed, you know, just worked in all those places so that I 
I could afford to buy some clothes, right. you know, at a discount price okay. so that I could <laughs> make it right. right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah you got to get your look and feel yeah. going on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, that's incredible. I love that you came from that history. And so then when you did that internship, then what happened? what did you do after that? Sure. So I honestly got that internship because it was at the time that, um, we were going from flat lay patterns that people were drafting on the tables, but into computer aided drafting. And I had been right. So CAD drawing. Yes. We had, and I had been certified in AutoCAD. And so yep. the reason they had hired me, um, was to take their um, hard patterns into digital, digitization and to you know, help lead that process. And so after that, they put me, when I, once I graduated and went into full time, they put me on a international production teams. Oh, um, fantastic. Yeah, for All right. women, um, inner wear, which is underwear, um, and then also um, special cuts. That's when um, companies would come to us and want us to run their private label. Um, and so I really looked around and because even a homegirl coming out of Oakland, you know, I was going to college. <laughs> yeah, I remember definitely. saying, okay, well, I don't look like a college student and really making that transition to, you know, Jack Purcell's vintage 501s, a white. Yes. Um, you know, t-shirt and, you know, just an Eddie Bauer puff coat. And that became my uniform. And I really took on the persona of a college student, even though I was struggling through my first engineering um, classes, but I saw the difference, you know, um, that it- Oh, it I love that. Well, so yeah. what you put on gave you the confidence to do what you were doing. Like right. you put that like on. Wow. That, I love that. I Wait. Like it communicated <laughs> that I was a student you know, yeah, versus that's right. a little, you know, hip girl coming out of Oakland, you know? Yep. Um, and so I, that's when I really, you know, thought of back in, you know, working alongside my grandmother when, you know, some of the costume designers would come or the jazz musicians would come um, to her and they say, oh, you know, and this kind of look has this and that kind of look has that. So when I looked around right after college, I was like, well, I could go into Silicon Valley and make twice as much as what I'm making, but I'm just married to this whole fashion thing, right? Yes. And my family thought I was totally <laughs> insane. Um, but I was like, what do the people that make the money look like? And so these yeah. people were very tailored, very, um, you know, had a, a great executive. You go boss, you go yeah. boss. Right. And so I knew that I was not at that level, but I knew I wanted to send the message that I was headed that way. So I took my That's first right. paycheck, went and bought three suits from the limited, you know, black, gray and navy, just how we used to do back in the day. That's right. That's and right. So Did you have like that little flippy sc scarf thing that hung down no. in your shirt? I've always <laughs> been just a collar, but I know what you're talking about. They always tried to get me to wear one of those. I'm like, mm, I'm no, too man. gay for that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and so literally I would break the suit up. I would never wear it together. So I wear yeah. the nice slacks with a nice top or the blazer with a nice pair of jeans. And so it really started sending the um, non- you know, verbal message that this girl is going places. And that in conjunction with my work, um, an opportunity came open for an international trip that was going around the world, you know, starting in Asia, ending in Europe and back into New York. And wow. I was chosen to go. And it was oh, six fantastic. After. Yeah, it was six months after. And ever since then, I just took off. That's fantastic. So how old were you when that opportunity happened? God, I think I was like 25, 26 years old. I was relatively young. I know I was the youngest person to ever go. Um, wow. and, but I just really always have taken myself really seriously. <laughs> Um, yeah. And so oh, I love that. Yeah, well, climbing was, all that, those cotton things, I was thinking about yeah. that. I'm like, yeah, I want to get to the top up the there. So top. that's, Thank there you, you go. That's just <laughs> yeah. a metaphor for you. Yeah. I love it. All right. So then, then you, you're out there, you're doing this thing, you're traveling, right. And then yeah. what happens? Well, you know, going global, I would say I never really had been a lot of places besides Denver, Seattle, where my dad lived yeah. in the summer and holidays, and then Oakland, and then, you know, California. So seeing the world just really opened my eyes. And um, I just wanted more, you know what yeah. I mean? And yeah. I saw the world differently. And yes. I just was like, okay, what's next? And so one of the things I loved, loved, loved production, but I was very, in, you know, I wanted to know, like, after I make this stuff, what do you guys do with it? How do you make right. it? 
funny. Um, and so my my college sweetheart, who is now my husband, um, was in on the West Coast, I mean the East Coast, um, doing um, grad school. And so the opportunity became available um, for me to go and be a buyer, executive buyer for May Company. And All so right. was, when I thought about it overall, in terms of what I wanted for my long term girl goals in my career, I was like, okay, this is perfect. So they relocated me out there. And then that's when I started um, the buying train. And so yes. it was, that was really fun because I, the literally the merchandise that I had produced, I met in store. <laughs> you oh, know, that's I, fantastic. Yeah. So it, it was, very, yeah, I was very connected to the whole process. Like, how is it going to sell? How does it sell through? How do you mark it down, you know, and margins? And that was actually a really oh. hard transition because it was going into finance. Um, but from there. Yeah, because you, know, you really have to understand it end to end, right? So you have yeah. to understand it from a, uh, from a seller's market, right? So yes. it's not just the buying. It's that what do you do with that aftermarket Absolutely. and what, what happens to it? And then where do they make their profit? in that and how can you get the most profit really and you so you got to really understand a spreadsheet <laughs> yeah, right. And that's what I tell people all the time. Like people are like, were you going to the fashion weeks? I'm like, absolutely. But that was like 10% of my job. And some, by the end of it, I didn't want to be there. I'd rather be in my <laughs> office making sure that I was doing my job, you know, um, because yeah. what comes down the runways does not always be produced. But um, yeah, it was a great experience. And it really gave me a 360 um, view um, yeah. into the fashion industry and you know, after I left that company, I had my first son, um, married my husband, um, and then I went to another company. And but this company was very specialized, um, uh -huh. and their thing was urban fashion. And so okay. this is the first time I realized, like, I'm not really into like the hip hop stuff. I had more of a classic personal taste. Yes. Um, and I, I, except for the jeans and the t-shirt and the puffy coat, the Eddie Bauer well, buff coat. Right. Well, you know, the thing is, <laughs> but like, that's about as far as it went after that, yeah. you were in the suits, right? Right. Oh, yeah. I, you know, the thing High is, fashion. I always loved suits. I always have had a classic, um, even as a kid, I wore Argyle, you know, vest sweaters. Like I just, you know, that was just kind of like my aesthetic probably coming from my mom, but I loved it. Right. Yeah. And, um, even, but when I got to DC, I personally, personally had issues um, with the dress code because it was so oh, yeah. black and white. And I was like, oh my God. And I they wrote me up because I didn't wear collared shirts. You know, oh my God. Are you kidding? Oh my yeah. gosh. So I fixed them. <laughs> Let me tell you what I did, Patty. I flew into San Francisco, went to the Hate Ashbury, hit up probably about three or four of my favorite vintage stores, got um 70 psychedelic shirts with Collars, Colors. <laughs> right? And I started popping them underneath my suit and people were like, oh my God. So that's where the concept yeah. of my concept of my company comes from like individual yes. taste and individual style. Because once I started putting those, I was fine. You yes. know, just the plain, boring, you know, white. Yeah, not going to happen. That's yeah, right. Like, it's not going to happen. Fashion yeah. office, aren't we? Exactly. <laughs> like so weird and bizarre. I know. Well, it, and it's, uh, I think that really, I remember this going into my first job, right? The first time I went into a consulting thing, I thought I had to wear a three-piece suit. Let me just say I bought a skirt. Okay. That's me buying a skirt that I hadn't worn one in years, skirt, right. heels, you know, top. Um, and then that shirt collared shirt, you know, but a, but a plain shirt. And let me just say it was a huge flop. I was so <laughs> uncomfortable that yeah. at the end of the day, I just took that suit and I took it right to a, you know, resale place. I'm like, yeah. I am never wearing that suit again. Again. Because it's not me. You know, right. I have to be myself, it's right? so important, right? It's so important. It is because your confidence comes from you feeling comfortable in your skin, right? Even, even if you got a Hugo Boss suit on, you got to know that it really represents you, whatever yeah, it is, right? Absolutely. absolutely. All right. So then, then how so did you get from this? into dressing people really I'm that's not the right way of saying it of course well, you've given them I, a look and yeah well honestly through my whole career there were different and my whole life I've had to reposition myself and I've always done that um through hair makeup and clothes I've always done that so 
um, you know, as a teenager, I was really yeah. insecure. Um, I was blessed to go into very um, great schools um, act for academics, but these girls had a lot of resources because they were private schools. I mean, yeah. I was on scholarships there, you know? Yeah. And I just hated the feeling of feeling inadequate. I hated the feeling of people thinking that they were better than me or me mentally, forget them, me mentally. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and the way that I was able to combat that was by staying in the, you know, the lines of the Walgreens or CVS in the makeup and the, you know, just getting myself together. And so yes. it had become a process because in the fashion industry, you know, especially when you're walking the streets of New York and yep. you know, all these different shows, people are looking you up and down to see if you look the part all the time. Yes. And that was something that just comes with my industry. And I yep. just felt like, hell, if they're going to look me up and down, let me give them something to look at. Plus, exactly. Like, exactly. Myself, right. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of things that don't have to be said if you walk in looking a certain kind of way, you know? Yeah. And so I had developed a process like, you know, as women, we come undone all the time, you know, for different, various different types of reasons. And um, I realized that I had a process of getting myself back on track every single time. Yes. And um, when I was at the last company I was at, I wasn't treated very well. Um, I was waiting to move back into San Francisco. So I took a job, um, which I thought would be temporary, but my husband did not want to leave the East Coast. And so we ended up getting pregnant um, with a set of twins. Oh, and wow. It, <laughs> well, that's a full-time job right yeah. there. And yeah. I've probably been ready um, I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit. It comes from um, the beauty of my family. Um, yeah. But I had probably been ready to start my own thing for about three, four years, but I just wasn't listening. You know what I mean? I just was, yeah. my, my focus was to get me and my kid and my husband back to San Francisco. And then I go work for one of the, um, you know, the companies there. And I yeah. had the opportunities in, lined up and I was just waiting and buying my time. Yes. Um, but that didn't work out, you know? No. Once you get pregnant, <laughs> with twins, twins. Like oh yeah, you got to be near family to help with them. You got to, yeah, was, it's crazy. Well, well, we we actually stayed on the East Coast. And oh, did you? Wow. That, okay, we crazy. Stayed on the East Coast without the family support, um, but I, you know, I had a bad situation in the office one day, and I, I was only probably about eight or nine weeks pregnant with my twins. I just, I'm a twin too. So it was a total shock to me that I was having twins. I was older and, you know, literally I was in risk of losing them. Yes. And I just made that decision at that very moment that no job is worth um, my- Losing integrity. your kids over. My, well, first of all, my integrity. Right. And secondly- you know, just the respect. And I knew the power that I had at that company. I knew yes. my contribution and it yes. was a lot. <laughs> yeah. um, and I was just like, no. And then the, when I piled on the fact that I had been under that kind of pressure, that's for what I'm a, thinking a long period of time. And now yep. I have kids and the kids for me was where I was like, absolutely not get your stuff together, get your stuff <laughs> and get yeah. out of here and don't ever come back. And yeah. so yeah. I walked off and yeah. it was very, I bet uh, that was scary. It was very scary because my husband was newly out of grad school. Um, like I said, we did not have the family support here, but yeah. it was definitely, it was me choosing myself over a job first yep. and foremost, even though I loved the industry and I actually loved the work that I did at the company because it was very successful. And the yes. people there were, um, you know, some, most of the people there were amazing. Um, but it was one of those things that that's when I said, you know, you got to feed yourself. You're going to yeah. have to feed yourself because yeah. Washington DC is not a fashion town at all. No. Um, yeah. The opportunities here are very far and wide in between. And I felt like if I did take another opportunity and they were presented to me, but in this region that I would just be setting myself up to go back down the same road. Yeah. Um, and I, I, what I love about what you're saying is one, and, and this for me is key, you know, you're in a circumstance where you're not treated well, people don't respect you. It's wrong. It's just right. wrong. And right. so, and you realize the stress, you've got these twins, 
yeah. and it's stressful. And that's why I said that about, you know, because of the kids, I mean, because of the stress, right. because you can't put your body under stress oh. and expect to and have a good experience. Those kids issues. feel that they feel yeah, all exactly. that, you know, and you don't want to birth a couple of kids who have issues because you were under stress when you were Absolutely. pregnant. Right. Absolutely. And, and uh, what I love about it is that you totally took it and you were like, no matter what, I'm going to have to do this myself. I'm going to have to feed myself. It's going to happen. And that, I think that is like a huge leap that you took with your husband just out of graduate school or in graduate school. You know, I mean, that's a big leap out into the middle of nothing, right? Yeah. So was- how did you, what did you do to get yourself to land? Well, to be honest with you, I got really depressed because I, yeah. everything I felt like I had worked for in my life and what saved me from myself as a young, young woman, um, I felt was like over, you know, where yeah. was I, what was I going to do? Um, I had always played with different business, you know, things and, you know, in the fashion space, um, designing jewelry, selling handbags at one time, yeah, um, yeah, different stuff, but it was nothing that I was just, I just said, if I'm, my husband was making it where I could have been a stay at home mom. I tried that junk with my first son and Jesus, no, it, I just, <laughs> Like I needed to have like, some. Oh my God. I have to have my own thing. Please. Yeah, I, I, I can't I, stay I, here with you. I, yeah, I tried. I tried. And I did actually, I did. I was a stay at home yeah. mom, but I just started this yeah. mom business on the side where I had yeah. my own little business, you know, to take care of. And yeah. so literally, I think once I finally got over just the depression of it all and just how everything had happened and really started to think about my power and my position and what I was able to do yeah. realistically with three children um, while also, you know, making sure that I was yeah. filling my soul. One of the things I've always loved is our beautiful women. Um, I could sit on a bench in Paris, London, a park in Oakland or Berkeley, you know, um, hiking. I love to see women pulled together and looking amazing, regardless if they're coming down the aisle of Target, they're picking up their kids from school yep. or working, you know, at a corporate office. And that's actually where it started because my mom um, was an executive in San Francisco and my grandmother used to pick her up and I would just sit there, you know, at the window, like a little girl and just, you know, watch all of the very nice women, um, dressed women and men walk by. And so I was like, you know what, I have a whole process about how I, you know, reinvent myself or recreate myself. And I understand often, and I also had done a lot of research about, you know, through the years about, um, style and stuff like that. And I was like, I need to turn it into something. Yeah. And so I worked, sat down six months pregnant with my twins and I wrote my business plan and I decided to go back and finish, get my master's. Wow. And so as soon as they were born, um, I enrolled in school. Um, I started, you know, putting the pieces together creatively. Um, yeah. And then when they were probably about one years old, I completed my master's. I went to London right before I completed my master's and trained yeah. um, with one of the world's best image consultants ever um, because I knew I needed a high level. Um, yes, yes. My experience level. And she, she was amazing. Um, but then I still needed to turn that into my own. You know what I mean? Yes, and- yes, of course. Okay. Because who um, you get a mentor, but they they give you their perspective on right. things, and you then have to shape that for what it is that's your thing, your niche, whatever Absolutely. it is, right? Absolutely. Yeah. That's fantastic. And, yeah, and so in the night, because I was there, I think for two weeks. And my twin brother and my mom came and watched my kids for me. Oh, wow. And in the night, I would, you know, during the day, I would train. And in the evenings, I would write my thesis. And so when I came back, I submitted that thing. I graduated and launched Polished um, the same month, December 2008. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I love that. Polished is a perfect name for your business because that's really what you're doing. You're helping people to get their polish going on. So tell me then, how did you get your first client? What was that like for you? <laughs> oh my God. So like I said, I, I believe in when you can't get it together, you go down to the bare bones. And I had gained a, 
a little bit over a hundred pounds pregnant with my twins. The budget was definitely not the same without that <laughs> second income. And so I had gone to like, you know, I think Target and shopping <laughs> Macy's and I had put yeah. together this little capsule of a wardrobe and literally I was wearing a uniform once again, similar to yeah, uniform yeah. I wore back in But college. your new uniform, your polished yeah. uniform, <laughs> and right? And actually it's very similar to what I have on. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, there you go. Because I was still nursing these guys. And yeah. so I was walking through um, our flagship mall here, um, which was Pentagon City and I have my twins with me. And this woman stopped me because I was there all the time. I, I hadn't really, you know, made any traction yet. And, and she stops me. She goes, I see you all the time. And you always look so well put together. And I'm a mess. I have a set of twins. And, you know, how do you do it? And I started laughing. I said, well, actually, it's a concept based on basics. And she said, basics. And so I said, well, actually, <laughs> I'm an executive image consultant and personal stylist. I just launched a business. You know, here's a car. Call me. Well, she did. And she, oh, ended yay. Up be, um, <laughs> you know, be own an executive coaching firm here. Oh, Houston. fantastic. So it just took off. From oh me. my God. Oh, I bet. I bet. And then like at the very beginning, how did you figure out your pricing and things like that? Those real basic things. Like, did you start off low and then eventually just build yes. yourself up? Yes. Right. Absolutely. Okay. And I'll be honest with you. My goal wasn't, um, you know, to make a ton of money. My goal was to give myself some business and then also to pay my student loans myself. I did not want to ask my husband to help yes. me pay for my student loans. I, that was my independence. Okay. Yes. yes. And so literally Polish would generate that. But then after a year, it just started growing and growing and growing and growing. Oh. And I was like, oh my God, I don't even know where to do with my kids. Like, you know what I mean? Like I was yeah. booking people in the evening hours and on the weekends when my husband can watch them. So Polish was really grown alongside the development of my children as well you know, that that is what honestly the best part about my company is because they were there when I was signing up for the LLC in the business office I'm like bottles and pushing the stroller I love you this know? I love this this is really really the life of a working mom I mean this yeah. is what's true <laughs> is that I, I love that they were there everywhere because you were there everywhere with your mom and your grandma and yeah. this is really what we, you know, the myth is that there's some other place that they should go. But honestly, the, the best way you learn about things is by watching and observing and Absolutely. seeing how other people are. And then you figure out, oh, who am I within the world of that? Right. And so I, I love that. So now what what's your favorite thing about what you do right now? You know, my favorite thing that I do right now is just work with women where they are. You know, women transition all the time and they're always going through things. And sometimes it's like, it, it, this can be overwhelming. It's not sometimes, this overwhelms a lot of women. And I'm like, I can teach you to take, you know, everything that you need to know about yourself when it comes to this fashion environment, because you don't have to be an expert in everything, you know? And we, we fall apart, you know, like um, four years ago, I was diagnosed with colon cancer. Oh and my God. One of the oh. things that I feel so blessed about is that my company kept going even when I wasn't taking new clients at times, um, I wasn't promoting my business. Um, there were a lot of things I just could, did not have the you know, energy to do because of what yes. I was going through, but the brand of Polished and the power of Polished and what it does um, kept my business moving till I got well. And then, you know, I was able to pick it up again, which yes. is the, in my opinion, the whole essence of what polished is about. So when I work with women that are going through those kind of things, you know, illness or, um, you know, promotions, or maybe they're retiring, maybe they've done a regional move, maybe they're getting a divorce. Um, maybe they're in a new relationship, you know, yes. those are the kind of things that really, um, make me extremely happy. I also really, really, I've always had a huge respect, especially coming out of the San Francisco Bay area for culture. And so the fact that I attract an international clientele makes yeah. me extremely happy. Um, so I'd say everything, everything. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's fantastic. Well, well, congratulations for coming through colon cancer. And I Thank hope you're you 
you know, just doing well now. And I just send that, send that energy your way. But here's what I love about what is very unique about you is that you actually are most interested in the point of pivot. You're interested in the creating the new persona that you are through your look and feel. So taking, helping you understand here's the base and the basics of what you need to know about you. And then let's build on that based on who you've emerged and have become. Is that right? Yes. So, so then give, give, give some um, of our listeners a tip about the basics. Is there any kind of tip that you would give them that would just help them as they're going into their closet before they call you on the phone to get you, you know, to help them, you know, is there any simple thing that you would give them that would be helpful? Sure. So a lot of people, when they think about fashion and style, they think about things with all the bells and whistles. They really forget about the stuff, just like this, you know, quick little shirt I threw on to jump on here um, that pull outfits together, that pull yeah. looks together. And so I could, I want to scream that from the rooftop because there's so many times that I've looked at a one in a woman's wardrobe and all I'm looking for is a simple black pair of slacks, no bells and whistles, no, no details, or all I'm looking for is a simple blazer or a simple collared shirt, like similar to this, and they're just not there. And so they get themselves in a bind because literally they'll have all these fashion items that they've picked up that they just love, but they have nothing to anchor them to. And so, you know, that is the one thing I would say is like, check your closet, make sure based on how you're functioning. So if you're a person that is working from home right now, you need, you know, an abundance of maybe, you know, comfortable pants, right? But those Definitely. comfortable pants, you know, make sure that there, some of them are plain. So when you put on a fashion shirt, you just put those comfortable pants on and you're good to go. You know what I mean? Well, and for me, it's like, it's not just comfortable pants. Can I wear them in public so that I could actually go out, you know, and uh, into the world and not have to change out of my sweatpants, right? So that there's something like that. I love that. So it's something really that you can, uh, that will anchor you, you said, anchor you. And and then what? Well, I think, and then you add on the fashion, Yeah, you know, and that's when I build capsule wardrobes for clients. The first thing that I am invested in is finding out what their personal taste level is. Um, You know, I'm 33% classic, 33% natural and 33% updated. Okay. So I'm always going to have some kind of classic kind of tailoring on, but you're, you'll see that I also will play with trends, but it will only be up to 33%. If I go over that, it's just like too costumey for me. (laughs) I love that. Now I want you to pay attention to, can you see the pull through of the engineer of her? That pulled (laughs) into that percentage thing. That's what I'm listening for. I'm like, she's totally an engineer. She's engineered this piece of your fashion so that you can create uh, the the closet that you need to have so that you can go in there anytime and pull together the things that, and I bet everybody has different percentages of that. Would you say? Yes, everybody. Like I I run a six week um, program. Okay. um, Where literally I help women, you know, develop their individual style and a wardrobe to match within that six week program. And I can tell you that there's women there from all over the country, you know, even internationally, and literally they're never the same. It's very rare, you know, cause I, yeah. it's a yeah. very intimate group. So I only take up to 10 people. That's but- fantastic. And is this online that you yes. do it? Okay. So yes. this is, if you're listening and you wonder like, how can I, this happen for me? You want to be one in those, one of those 10 that get into that. Um, I would say that, uh, individualized experience it so is. that you can learn, you can learn and you can listen to what other she does with other people. Oh my God. I, I have to get in. I'm getting in that. That's all there is to it. I yeah. love that. It's, it's one of the, well, you know, I work with women one-on-one too. Okay. Yes. And that's a, a faster process, but there, I mean, that's right. If they fly you to Paris and you no, want to no, do no, that no, or no. Vienna, you're okay with that. You'll be fine with that <laughs> going wherever it is. <laughs> <laughs> some women, you know, what I learned is I just respect differences and people learn different. So some yeah. women can learn everything within their consultation and me pulling together their capsule and they're like, okay. But then there's other women that 
they, they learn by doing, they learn by, you know, asking questions. And so that's why I developed the six week program yes. um, just to help them. Because what I basically do for all of my clients, whether it's one-on-one or whether it's in a group program is I teach them what I know, but for them. Okay. So they become yes. their own style editor. And to me, that's where the power comes from. That's where the confidence comes from. Because once you understand your personal taste level, your fashion rules, your body type, all those kind of things gel yes. together, then the confidence comes with, I'm killing it because I know I am, <laughs> you know what I mean? Not what <laughs> yeah, other people yeah. are, are talking about. It's because this is my personal taste level. This is how I do it. So, you know, I'm whatever get yeah, with it right. yeah <laughs> that's right i love that I, so when when you think about the vision of the future for you what's that look like for your business for where you're going what what do you want to be known for or what do you want to do that you haven't stepped into yet that you want to expand into yeah well to be honest with you i'm working on that now i want to touch as many women as i can I think life is, you know, I have a different view of life just based on what I've gone through, especially in the last five years, where yes. life is just too short to feel insecure, not attractive, you know, yes. and not full of joy. You know what I mean? And if yes. clothes and your appearance is what is holding you back, girl, I got you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, come on. I we can we can fix this up real quick and I can let unleash you to the world with your power. You know what I mean? So that is honestly what makes me happy. And when when I I was ill, I really had to do some deep soul searching. And honestly, every single time I thought about what do you want to do with the rest of your life? If you're blessed to, you know, be, yes. Yeah. And it was the same thing. It was the same thing. So going forward, that's what I want to be known for. I want to be known for the woman that helped me get my stuff together and taught me a process that I can always keep myself together. Even when I fall apart, I can put it back together, you know, um, and, you know, just broadening in my reach, because honestly, I've been in the DMV, I've been a mom, so I never really focused on my reach. I was blessed to work with a lot of international people, you know, diplomats and um, people yes. coming here on business just based on the region that I'm in. Yep. Um, also, my specialty um, it was very attractive to them. So that part was, but I never really expanded my reach until COVID. When COVID happened, that's when I decided, like, you know, I prayed about it. I was like, oh, Lord, you know, with my, this old weak yeah. immune system of mine, it's just not going to be safe. Even they won't know what am I going to do? And I really consider, you know, just that's it, you know, just from a health yeah. perspective. Yeah. But I thought, thought it through and talked it through, you know, with my advisors, like my family, or my mom, you know, my aunts are great advisors. And finally, yep. I said, you know what, I'm, I had been doing digital work for a very long time because a lot of my diplomats would get deployed That's and right. um, a lot of the people that would work with me um, domestically would end up going back to their home countries and they would want to keep working with me so yeah. I actually had the whole processes already already in the digital space yeah yes. so I think you know we underestimate I mean me too I was a live illustrator so I was often a speaker and an illustrator live and in person and when it pivoted, I had just started doing online classes just before uh -huh. that. And everything, of course, became online and still is. And so when I get called to go places that real and in person, I'm like, really, are you sure that you can't do it? Are you really going to all get together? Is this is COVID still really high because I still want to wear my, you know, comfortable bottoms instead of like put on my put on my suit. Right. And right. so I love that, that, that is, you were able to easily transition into that. Oh my God. I could ask you so many questions. <laughs> I have to save it for the next time I talk to you because I want to come and do that, um, that course with you, because I think that sure. would be fantastic. And if you're listening, um, you want to look in the show notes here and get involved. I want you to really carefully look at where she is in Instagram because polished is something you need. You definitely need to do this. And uh, this, this piece that we're in a time of pivot. So you have to understand that if you're not aligning what you look like with who you are inside, you're doing a disservice to the people 
uh, to, to showing your full self, I think. And that's what you're talking about. So, um, all right. I just want one last question. I want to ask you before I got to let you go. Cause I know you have a hard stop. So <laughs> what does your day look like? Tell me from the moment you get up until what, what happens in your day? And, sure. you know, just give me the brief overview, but people love to get inside your world. So how do you prepare yourself in the world? Do you have any daily practice you do and things that help you to bring your full self into the world? Sure. So, you know, I wake up relatively early. I like to be up before my twins. My oldest son is away at school, so I don't really have to worry about him. But I do a lot of meditation in the morning, um, just, you know, focusing on my day. Um, and just checking in with myself. Um, and yeah. then about seven o'clock, my twins rise. We, you know, do the whole morning routine. I drive them to school and by 10 o'clock, um, I'm fully dressed and, you know, usually working on Zoom, if not taking calls, um, meetings, doing marketing and, st and stuff like that. So that goes through my day um, until about maybe about three o'clock and then I'll go pick them up and I'll come back. And then I'm usually working with clients um, in the evening time. So sometimes I'll be working with clients, but there's a window at 12, one at two, and then one at five. So I only take, because this is such a creative process, I only take about four clients a week. Um, I bet. And the reason why is because I'm a creative person. I want to zero in and focus on them. So I take them during the latter part of the week. Um, once the merchandise is, you know, up on the systems that, you know, that people have received. So I can really give them um, the best assortments available, the consultation, you know, I've had time to really go in and deep dive and study them yes. and so forth. So my typical week, I probably shut down at around 10 o'clock. I'm trying to get better about not working past a certain time, but yeah. it, honestly, it doesn't feel like work to me. And none of my jobs, except for the bad, you know, treatment, yeah. none of us, I've never made a single dime. I don't think even outside of the fashion industry, I don't think of it as work. <laughs> so yeah. I, you That's know, fantastic. I, yeah, I love I that. that work as work at all. And, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years, you know, th over 30 years now. Yeah, I love that. Well, you are incredible. I just love everything you've said today, Robin. Oh, and I, I just um, just want to say thank you so much for spending time with us. Listeners, just really pay attention to the show notes. Take some of these tips to heart and really upgrade what you're doing, you know, so that you can get your capsule together because I want my capsule together so it matches my brand and everything. So yeah. thank you for spending time with us. And we will look forward to seeing you again because I'm having you back on the show so that you can tell sure. us more about what we need to do to get it together. All right, everybody, let's give a big round of applause. Robin, thanks so much for coming on. And thank you, everybody, for listening. If you like what you're here, you know, be sure to forward it to your friends because we want all of you to be learning some of these great tips. And until next time, up your creative genius. I mean it, Robin. Thank you. Thank you.